right, we're going to continue doing AP review. Uh, this is 2006 uh, BC for response 3, which is a parametric problem with a calculator. Uh, in 2006, calculators were still permitted on question 3. All right, so uh, an object moving along a curve in the xy plane has position x of t comma y of t at time uh, t, where, and then they give us dx dt and dy dt. So they give us dx dt as the inverse sine of 1 minus 2e to the negative t, and they give us dy dt as 4t over a 1 plus t cubed. Now since this is a calculator problem, uh, it's very, very likely that the first play, the very first smart thing that you can do is enter these things into x1t and x uh, x1t and y1t of your calculator, right? So that's right here if you're in parametric mode. Uh, as always, you should be in radians, right? Uh, so I'm going to do the inverse sine of 1 minus 2 uh, and then e to the negative t, right? Uh, and that's going to be my first function. And then my second one's going to be a 4t in parentheses divided by in parentheses a 1 plus t to the third, right? Um, so again, you don't have to do this. Uh, first and foremost, but it's pretty common that you're going to want to have them in. Uh, you always want to enter the parametric pairs uh, so that they match. So like if, if your x prime is your y is your x1t, make sure your y prime is also your y1t, right? Don't put like regular x in as your x1t, but y prime is your y1t. That's a bad idea. All right. So uh, we are also given the information that at time t equals 2, the object has position 6 comma negative 3. All right. So Part A, find the acceleration vector and the speed of the object at time t equals 2. So notice they're not asking you to find the acceleration vector all the time, because that would be harder and you'd have to derive these by hand. What they're asking you to do to find the acceleration vector uh, is they're asking you to derive at 2, right? So they don't want a everywhere, they want a of 2. And in order to find that, what's going to happen is I'm going to have to derive this guy, right? Uh, so I'm going to want that this is going to end up being x double prime at 2, comma y double prime at 2, which is a thing that your calculator can do for you, right? So what I want my calculator to do is I want my calculator to derive, so I'm going to pick math 8, which is n derive, okay? I want my calculator to derive, which is math 8, and then x1t, because I've already put this in as my x1t, with respect to t at 2, and I'm going to do the same thing where I do math 8 and I'm going to do n derive, of y1t with respect to t at 2. So when I put this in, what it's going to look like, right, so when I quit out of here, I'm going to go ahead and hit math 8, right, uh, I'm going to go to vers, I'm going to go to parametric and pick x1t, comma, with respect to t at 2, and hit enter. And that's going to give me my x coordinate of the acceleration vector. And then I'm really lazy. So I'm going to hit second and enter. And I'm just going to go up and change that x1t to a y1t by going to vers over to parametric and pick y1t and hit enter. And that's my y coordinate of my acceleration vector. So again, you shouldn't be doing a ton of work on this. The AP cares that you understand how to get it. And then they just want you to type it in. They're not going to care about the work to type it. So my a2 is in vector notation a 0.395 or 6, depending on if you round or truncate, comma, a negative 0 0.740 or 1, depending if you round or truncate. Uh, you don't have to write this second answer. I always write it so that I, as the person grading it, know if you are correct. All right, so that was the first prompt. There are two prompts here, though, right? So that's one of the things we have to watch out for, is that when a part A has two prompts, we sometimes forget to do one of them. So... Second prompt, find the speed of the object at that time, right? Well, I know that the speed, right, the speed at 2 should be the square root of x prime of 2 quantity squared. That's a really large prime. Sorry, guys. I made it worse by doing that. Uh, plus y prime of 2 quantity squared. So I've shown you this trick a couple times before. You can find these values really easily. Um, because this is my x1t and this is my y1t and I've already put them in my calculator, if I graph, right, if I hit graph, and I hit trace, well, when it's done graphing. Okay, if I hit trace and two, that's gonna give me the x and y coordinate at two, and that's stored in my calculator currently as x and y. So what's gonna happen, like right now, this x in my calculator is stored as a 0.817 blah blah blah, and the y is stored as a 0.8 repeating. So if I quit out of this real quick, and I just wanna prove to you that that's happening, even if you don't believe me, uh, if I hit alpha x, notice you can't hit the normal button you'd hit for x because this is t right now in parametric mode. 
if I hit X, I sure enough get the X I told you it would be stored as. And if I hit alpha Y, sure enough, I get the 0.8 repeating. So all of that to say that I can now type in the square root of, right? So I'm going to type in square root of alpha X, right? The thing I just stored as X conveniently when I found it, plus alpha Y, right? And that's squared. Sorry, I forgot the squared after the X when I said it. Uh, close the parentheses, and that's going to give me my speed. So after all that work, uh, which is mostly just a lot of typing, I'm going to get that my speed was a 0.1207 or 8, depending on if you round or truncate, right? Um, we should double check that no units were given in this problem. Nope, no units. So don't invent units if no units were given, right? Uh, so there weren't any units, but before I proceeded, I made sure that I didn't forget any. All right, so now let's go on to prompt B. The curve has a vertical tangent line at one point. At what time t uh, is the object at this point? All right, so we need to know what vertical tangent means. So a vertical tangent, right, so uh, we're on b, right, so, so the tangent slope, right, tangent slope is dy dx, but in parametric that means y prime of t over x prime of t, right, and what it means to have a vertical slope right? The vertical slope would mean that the denominator x prime of t equals 0, but the numerator y prime of t does not equal 0, because 0 over 0 is an indeterminate form. It's not uh, the same as everything else. So what we're looking for is when does this denominator equal 0? So uh, there's a couple ways to do this. Uh, you want to know when the inverse sine of 1 minus 2e to the negative t is 0. Um, you could do some solution stuff to actually solve this, and that's fine. It is a calculator section, so I'm really not sure that there's a whole lot of reason to do that. Um, you could just let your calculator do it. One word of caution about that, and I've mentioned it in previous videos, is that you, you can't second calc 0 in parametric mode. So if you chose to do this, if you wanted to do second calc 0, you could switch your calculator to function mode just for a sec, and you could make your y1 the inverse sine of 1 minus 2e to the negative x, and then you could second calc 0. And that's just fine, right? It's absolutely fine if you choose to do that. There are other options, and I'll walk you through the way that you can solve. The answer does turn out to be a natural log of 2. If you chose to do this, you would switch back in mode to function for just a second, right? And then you'd go to y equals, and I pulled this trick on the last question. So uh, you'd switch to sign inverse 1 minus 2 uh, e to the negative x, right? Uh, and then you would go ahead and hit graph. And then you're going to second calc 0. So you could do second calc and 0. And I apologize, it's hard to see at this angle. All right, so I'm left of the 0. I cross the 0 and I hit enter. And I get that my x, which is really a t. So again, all this work that was in blue, I do not actually need. Uh, my calculator stuff doesn't have to be shown. I'm just explaining it to you. I would get that t is 0.693147182, blah, 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 blah. And I'll be honest, I'm probably going to call that A. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to quit out of this, right? Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and, and get that X and store it as alpha A, because that way I know I have it if I need it, right? So that's the time we're talking about. Um, so they asked, when does it have a vertical slope? It is worth noting that if you were to plug this number in here, you would not get a zero, right? Y prime would not be zero because uh, you'd get like 0.24 something on the top. The bottom is clearly not uh, anything other than a, a number. It's fine. So, so this is the only time you're talking about. The second question is, uh, what at what time t? Oh, no, I'm sorry. That was the only question. At what time t? So that's my answer. I didn't need to sort as a. My bad. Uh, so 0.693 uh, is my answer. And again, I don't need units. All right. Part C. For part C, uh, let m of t denote the slope of the line tangent to the curve at the point x of t, comma y of t. Write an expression for m of t in terms of t and use it to evaluate the limit as t approaches infinity of m of t. So for part C, m of t should be essentially y prime of t over x prime of t, which are two values that we were given, right? We were given 4t over 1 plus t cubed, all over this inverse sine of 1 minus 2e to the negative t, right? Um, 
So that's the expression that they want, right? That's what they want. So so my the first part of the answer is just that they want m of t equals this thing. Now, how nice you want to make it is up to you. If you want to put the 4t by itself on the top and the 1 plus the t cubed times the inverse sine of 1 minus 2 e to the negative t here, that's fine, right? That's, that's great. That's probably the most simplified version. So that's the first part of the question. The second part of the question is what happens as this thing... Uh, what th happens to this equation as t approaches infinity? So the limit as t approaches infinity of this thing, right, of m of t, uh, or if you want to look at it this way, the limit as t approaches infinity of 4t over 1 plus t cubed. Uh, you know, I'm actually going to leave this as a separate fraction because it's easier to consider them. Oh, I'm sorry, that was an inverse sign, guys. I missed the inverse on that. My bad. Uh... 1 minus 2e to the negative t. Okay, so if we look at these individually, okay, let's look at these as two separate limits. Let's look at this guy, the limit as t approaches infinity of 4t over a 1 plus t cubed. Now you can either use L'Hopital's to figure out that this is zero, or you can use some knowledge you probably have from your Algebra 2 class. Um, essentially, horizontal asymptotes for rational functions, which are polynomials over other polynomials, work in such a way that if the denominator degree is larger than the numerator degree, that this guy approaches a zero. Um, if you needed to do L'Hopital's to figure that out, so if I just come over here for a sec, I think you can actually see me over here better. If I wanted to do L'Hopital's to show that, right, the limit as t approaches infinity, uh, the derivative of the top is a 4, the derivative of the bottom is a 3t squared. If you plug in infinities, you get 4 over infinity, which indeed is zero. So that piece is fine. The question is, what happens to the other guy as we approach infinity, right? Well, the other guy, so times the limit as t approaches infinity of 1 over sine inverse of 1 minus 2e to the negative t, right? Uh, I made a giant parenthesis there for no reason. All right, so if we were to plug in an infinity here, what I want you to notice is this essentially ends up becoming a 1 over an inverse sine of 1, right? Uh, it ends up becoming a 1 over an inverse sine of 1 uh, because if you were to plug in this, this value here, this guy becomes a 2 over an e to the infinity, which is a 0. So this would become a 1 minus 0. Uh, well, the inverse sine of 1 is a pi over 2 because what you're asking yourself is what angle has a sine of 1, right? So sine of some mystery angle gives you 1. Uh, well, that mystery angle is pi over 2, right? So science, so the mystery angle is definitely pi over 2. So when you're asked what angle gives you a value, a sine value of 1, it's pi over 2. So you get a 0 times what ends up being a 2 over pi, which means the whole thing comes out to be 0. Honestly, the AP didn't even make you bother to calculate what inverse sine of 1 was. You also have a calculator in this particular problem. Uh, you just had to spot that it comes out to 0. All right, uh, last bit, part D. Uh, the graph of the curve has a horizontal asymptote y equals c, right? But do not evaluate an expression involving an improper integral that represents the value of c. Okay, so what it means for a graph... Right, sorry, I did something dumb at the end of 2006 for your response 3, and uh, there was no good way to fix it without just stopping and redoing part d. So... Uh, a horizontal asymptote means the behavior of y as x approaches plus or minus infinity. But in this problem, since the limit as t approaches infinity of our dx dt is an inverse sine of 1, which we saw in part c, uh, which is a pi over 2 or, more importantly, bigger than 0, that means that x is increasing forever. So as t goes to infinity, x must also go to infinity. That means that our horizontal asymptote, c, right, our horizontal asymptote C, which is uh, the limit of y as x approaches infinity, should be the limit as t approaches infinity of y of t. So if we use the first fundamental theorem of calculus, right, uh, we've seen this a bunch of times, right, we've seen that if we integrate, let's say, y prime of t with respect to t uh, from some a to b, right, that we get y of b minus y of a, which allows us to find a missing value. Well, the trick here is that we want to find a value that is infinity, right? So this value C essentially should be the same as, uh, well, so, so since C is essentially like, C is kinda, like even though this is not an officially math, math notation, it's like Y of infinity, right? So if I use a bound of a Y value I know, which in this case at the beginning of the problem, they give me Y of 2 is negative 3, right? I'm given that Y of 2 is a negative 3, right? Um, so 
if I if I use y of 2 because it's a value I know and if I use the top bound as infinity because I want y of infinity even though this is not really an acceptable math notation what's gonna happen is I'm gonna get that uh, I could add this y of a over which in this case is my y of 2 and I could get that c is the same as a y of 2 plus the integral from 2 to infinity of my y prime or my dy dt which was the 4 t over 1 plus t cubed dt. So what the AP was specifically looking for was that you recognize this negative 3 was a value, so negative 3 plus this integral, right? And they did warn you that the expression would involve an improper integral, meaning there would be an infinity as a bound, right? So that's what they wanted for C.